So guys, welcome back to the channel. On today's video, I'm going to be giving you my thoughts on Mizuno's newest version of their, probably their most popular shoe, the Wave Rider 27. I'm going to give you the specs, I'm going to tell you what it feels like on the run, and I'm going to talk about this fantastic colorway. Let's get into it. Guys, first of all, Mizuno was good enough to send me this shoe for the purpose of review. However, they're not going to get a chance to see anything I put out about the shoe before you do here on YouTube. And I was lucky enough to receive a pair of the Project Zero colorway. Now, Project Zero is where Mizuno partners with Breast Cancer Research Foundation. And Mizuno already donates to this great cause, but also when you buy a pair of Project Zero shoes, Mizuno will donate a portion of the proceeds to the Breast Cancer Research Foundation. Now, this partnership has already been going on for years. Mizuno has already donated hundreds of thousands of dollars. So obviously, if you buy a pair of the Project Zero Wave Rider 27, you're not just getting a solid pair of shoes, you're also contributing to a worthy cause. Now the Project Zero Wave Rider 27 will cost you $150, but on the bright side, this shoe is going to last you a very long time. In fact, if you wanted to keep this shoe for 600 miles, I would not be surprised if it still feels just as good. We have 38 and a half millimeters in the heel, 26 and a half millimeters in the forefoot for a 12 millimeter drop. Now that's pretty standard for Mizuno with that 12 millimeter drop in these daily trainers. However, and this is just me, it doesn't feel like what I expect a 12 millimeter drop shoe would feel like. I have other shoes that are an 8mm drop, a 10mm drop, and this feels more in line with that. But either way, if you are a fan of a higher drop shoe, the Wave Rider 27 is going to fit right into your wheelhouse. Mizuno claims that a US men's size 9 will tip the scale at 10.5 ounces or 298 grams. Now the sample size is a US men's size 9, and what is listed on the site for the Wave Rider 27 and the Wave Rider 26, last year's version, was size 9 is 10.5 ounces and the size 9 in the Wave Rider 26, don't know why I keep doing this, I have the Wave Rider 26 right down here. Mizuno says that this, the 26 in a US men's size 9, will weigh in at 10 ounces. That's half an ounce lighter than the Wave Rider 27. However, in my size, a US men's size 13, the Wave Rider 27 will tip the scale at 12.2 ounces or 346 grams. And that is a whole 10 grams lighter than last year's version. So, I don't know, I guess if your feet are a little bigger, you're going to be getting a lighter shoe. All right, you know the drill. Let's start at the top. Let's work our way down. Heel collar is nicely padded, just as we would expect in a daily trainer. These are built for comfort, my friends. Now, Mizuno has made a complete overhaul of the upper on the Wave Rider 27. And what they've done is actually shrunk the padding around the heel collar a little bit over the Wave Rider 26. It's not a lot. It's not something that you're actually going to notice by feeling it. But when I do hold both shoes up together, I can see that we have just, it's a little thinner right around here. In my opinion, at least, I think that's good. We definitely want padding around the heel collar, but we don't need like pillows and pillows of it, right? So anything they can do to reduce the amount of padding while still keeping it fairly padded is a good thing. The Wave Rider 27 has a lovely step-in feel. In fact, it's just, it's exactly what you want from a daily trainer. You just want to put your feet in and be comfortable right away. The heel counter on the Wave Rider 27 is it's rock solid. We want a good heel lockdown because ultimately when you're going out and you're running in a daily trainer, this is the shoe that you're going to put the bulk of your miles in and you want it to be comfortable. You want to have a good heel lockdown. You want to be thinking about, is my heel slipping? Is the midfoot lockdown good? Do I have to run in a certain way? No, forget that. You just want to go out, knock out your miles. And the Wave Rider 27, it's daily trainer. It's made to just set it and forget it, tie it and go. Mizuno is using a knit upper. The Running Bird logo on the side is actually stitched in rather than a TPU overlay. We've got some overlays coming down the eyelet chain just to give that a little support. Overlay right here on the back and then an underlay right around the toe box just to keep that material off the top of your toes. Now if you've run in a Mizuno daily trainer before, I don't know, the Wave Rider, the Wave Sky, there's a lot of room in the toe box. There's definitely enough room for your feet to feel like they can splay out. They're not constricted. Again, that's what we're looking for in a daily trainer. Now this knit upper, I can see through it. It's fairly breathable right through here but just feeling how thick it is I think I'm going to run into a little bit of trouble when I start running in the heat of summer when my shoes start getting soaked with sweat and I come home and I have to stuff them with newspaper I really think this knit material is going to hold on to some liquid now during the testing phase of this shoe I haven't really gone out when it's been so super hot that I come home and the shoe is soaked but I think that this shoe could put on a little bit of weight just because of all the padding now that's nothing against the Wave Rider 27 it's just this type of shoe daily trainers tend to use a bit more material than the the race day shoes that are super light and wispy. The tongue is medium in thickness. It's not ridiculously overdone. It is gusseted on both sides of the tongue. There is no lace loop down the middle, but it seems to me that the gussets just hold the tongue in place. I didn't run into any issues with the tongue migrating at all, but that's because it's gusseted. It's virtually impossible for the tongue to migrate. The material on the top of the tongue does seem to be a very aerated mesh. However, on the underside of the tongue that you can't see, it's a little thicker, almost one piece mesh. So while it does look very aerated on the top, probably not as aerated
weird as it looks at first glance. All right, let's come down to the midsole. Mizuno is using their energy foam. It's a solid foam for a daily trainer. It definitely has that protective feel to it, where you can go and take out this shoe for I don't know, a 20 mile long run and you're not gonna feel beat up at the end because the shoe is protecting your foot so much. Now, I was curious at the difference between the Wave Rider 26 and the Wave Rider 27, because when I was running in the 27, it just, it felt a little softer, just maybe slightly softer than the Wave Rider 26. And I haven't actually received word if Mizuno has made any changes to the formulation of the Mizuno Energy Foam in the 27 versus the 26, but I do have a durometer right here, so we can just see, see the differences. And I'm gonna put it on the same spot in each shoe. So I'm gonna take my first reading of the Wave Rider 27 right here on the back of the heel. The shoes are very similar in how the midsole, the shape, so I'm going to be able to see the exact same spot on the 27 and the 26. But if I put it right here on the heel, right above the plate, we've got a durometer reading of 28. And then if I take the Wave Rider 26, put it in exactly the same spot, yeah, 29 and a half. Okay, let me drop down to just below the plate. And now I'm getting a durometer reading of 42, 42.5. Let me take the same reading on the 27, 37, 37.5. Okay, so just by taking those couple of readings, it does look like that the numbers back up that the Wave Rider 27 is just a little softer than the Wave Rider 26, at least right here in the heel. And honestly, with 12 millimeter drop, the shoe is going to work better if you are a heel striker. But my friends, even if you say you're not a heel striker, for the speeds that this shoe is designed for, remember, this is a daily trainer. This is the shoe that you're gonna put on just to churn out those miles at a nice, easy pace. A lot more people heel strike when they're running slow than when they're running fast. But just out of curiosity, let's just check the durometer reading for the front of the shoe. Let's say you land in the forefoot, put this here on the 27. I've got 26.5 on the forefoot reading of the Wave Rider 27. And if I put it in the same spot, I've got 31. So again, the Wave Rider 27 is just a little bit softer than the Wave Rider 26. I wouldn't call this a plush ride. I think Mizuno has really hit the sweet spot with not being too soft and not being too firm. It's just a super comfortable ride. Now, right in between the energy foam, you can see this, the black plastic right there. Well, it's not plastic, it's a bio-based glass fiber. And then on the lateral side, you can see it a little more. It seems to come up just a little higher on this side. And then if you look at the bottom of the shoe, there is an exposed, there's a decoupled groove coming right down the middle. And you can just see that glass fiber plate exposed right there. Now that plate is not there for any performance benefits. Well, I guess, I guess it could be argued that it is there for some performance benefits, but it's not the same as a, let's say, a nylon plated shoe or a carbon plated shoe. It's not gonna give you that forward propulsion that you get from the other shoes. The wave plate in the Wave Rider 27, that's a lot of waves. It's more there to help with transition when you're transitioning from toe to heel and to give just a little stability. Now this is not a stability shoe, but just in the same way that we have this decoupled heel with this groove running right down the middle, this is a stability element. Doesn't mean it's a stability shoe, it's a neutral shoe, but it has stability elements. And the wave plate and that decoupled heel are really gonna help you when you're moving through your gait cycle from heel to toe. There's a lot of rubber here on the outsole, which is a good thing. That is part of the reason that these shoes are gonna last you such a long time. Mizuno is using an X10 carbon rubber and there is, there's plenty of coverage. Like these lugs are, I don't know, two millimeter lugs, three millimeter lugs, I don't know, I don't, I'm not gonna measure it, but they look like there's a lot of rubber right here on the forefoot and then right on the lateral heel. Yeah, it's standing up pretty well. Now, I've put quite a few miles in this shoe. I can see the wear on my lateral heel area, but it's almost just like the little grooves have worn down. It's not, doesn't look any different from the lugs that are untouched, but there is a little bit of wear. Forefoot doesn't really look like this anywhere at all. It looks pretty good. Okay, let's, let's talk about ride. The Wave Rider 27, look, it's not gonna win any awards for excitement. You're probably not gonna break the two hour marathon in this shoe, but that doesn't mean there isn't a place for this shoe in every runner's shoe stable. We all need a daily trainer. We all need those shoes that we reach for when we go out for our easy runs, our recovery runs, because those are the miles that we should be doing the most of. And because we're doing the most of them, we need a shoe that stands up for the punishment that can just go out and take care of business. And when you're taking care of business, you want something that's comfortable. And for me, at least, the Wave Rider 27 is just, it's a super comfortable shoe. I don't have to think about it. My foot goes in, my foot feels good. I come home, my legs don't feel beat up, my feet feel good. All in all, it's it's a very good daily trainer. And also, if you work in an area where you wear running shoes to work, I think this is gonna be a good shoe that you possibly could use for that if you're on your feet all day. And that's ultimately a testament to just how comfortable this shoe is. And look, I wouldn't use this shoe for a tempo run. I wouldn't use it for a workout, but that's okay. This shoe knows its place and it knows it's not going to be used for that. Just a little 
heavy, it's a little bulky when we're trying to get our feet turning over really quickly. However, if you are a beginner runner and you want one pair of shoes and you want to maybe wear them outside as like a lifestyle shoe and you just want to be comfortable, I think this would fit the bill. And if you've been running for a while and you're just looking for a shoe to put in the miles, something you don't have to worry about, I think this shoe is also going to work for you. And of course, for you loyalists out there that just love the Wave Rider, this shoe is definitely for you. It's a good update. It looks like they may have changed the formulation just based on my feel and based on the durometer readings, but the outsole looks identical to the previous version, just a tad softer. The upper is a nice update, especially in this Project Zero version. And look, I gotta say, the Project Zero with this pink, now the women also have a pink, but it's a little more white and pink. I think this shoe looks sharp. The black and pink just looks very exciting. This was the Wave Rider 26. It's a bit boring, especially when you compare it to the Wave Rider 27. So for that reason, I think everyone should go out and buy the Project Zero version. Right, guys, let me know what your daily trainer of choice is. Let me know if you've run in any of the Wave Riders over the past 27 versions. And if you have made it to this point in the video, first of all, thank you. Second of all, why don't you put that emoji with the guy is, is cutting his hair. And that has nothing to do with this shoe. I just gave myself a haircut before I got on camera to film this video. And with that, my name is Matt B. This has been my review of the Mizuno Wave Rider 27 in the Project Zero colorway. Pretty good shoe, comfortable, and this shoe is gonna last you a long time. Be kind, be happy, run well. I'll see you in a couple of days.